In this tutorial, I will show you how I made this Rilakkuma inspired bag. Although having made the bag, I think it looks more like Kaguma-chan. But anyway, first draw your circle to your preferred size. Mine had the diameter of about 15 centimeters. After you've drawn your circle, add one centimeter for seam allowance. Next, measure half of the circle. This measurement will be for the upper and lower edges of the bag. I made the width of the bag 6.5cm which became 7.5cm with seam allowance and I added 1cm seam allowance to the length of the bag too. To mark the position of the zip, measure the length of the zip first then fold the pattern in half lengthways and widthways. Put a cross at the center point. Now draw out the length of the zip by one centimeter for the width. Draw a line through the centre to indicate where to cut the opening. Stop at 1cm from the edge and make a triangle to the corners of the rectangle. You will need two cutouts of everything for the outer material and two for the lining. I used faux leather for the outer material and for the lining I used polycotton which I reinforced by sewing it to two pieces of felt. Without doing this, the bag would be too floppy. I then sewed the lining and the outer material wrong sides together and cut off any excess fabric. For the zipper section, I placed the lining piece on top of the outer material right sides together, making sure the opening was aligned properly and then I sewed around the zipper markings. Pull the lining through the zipper opening and clip it in place making sure the fabric is taut before placing the zip underneath and top stitching in place. It is important to make sure you cut the markings that go to the corners of the rectangle otherwise the fabric won't lay flat. Once that's done, cut off any excess fabric. I am now drawing the ears for the bag, and once I am happy with the shape, I will transfer this pattern onto two pieces of felt, reinforcing it with stitches in a crisscross pattern before sandwiching it between two pieces of the outer material and sewing it in place. As my felt was yellow, I used a black marker pen to colour in the edges and went over it with a clear nail polish to prevent the ink from bleeding onto the outer material. Going back to the edges of the bag, use a ribbon, bias tape or narrowly cut piece of material to cover the ends and sew it in place. For my bag, I'm going to make the straps adjustable, so I cut two pieces of the back strap 6cm long to thread through a loop buckle. 
To figure out where I want to place the buckle, I need to temporarily clip the lower edge of the bag to the circle. Once I've decided where to position the buckle, I will sew it in place. If I were to make this bag again, I would sew these buckles higher up the sides. This is because when the buckles are too low, the bag will end up flipping upside down when in use. When the buckles are in place, attach the bias tape to the circle and sew in place. Now I'll take the upper and lower edges of the bag and sew them together. Turn them inside out before clipping it to the circle. Sew it all in place, then fold the bias tape over and sew around the circle once again. For the front of the bag, position the ears where you want them to be on the circle and then carefully flip them over so they are pointing downwards and clip in place. Mark the centre point of the bag and the centre point of the bare face, place them right side together and sew with the bias tape. Once that's done, cut the excess material from the ears, fold the bias over and sew again. The inside is now complete, so turn the bag right side out. Now I'm going to move on to the strap. Now this is what I mean when I said that it's better to move the buckles higher up to prevent the bag from flipping upside down. Mine were way too low. Take your strap and thread it through one of the loop buckles and sew it in place. If you're making an adjustable strap, take your 3 bar slider adjuster and thread the strap through that and down to the other loop buckle. Now thread the strap back through the slider adjuster, but this time from underneath. Once it's threaded through, sew it where I am indicating. When I made the bag, I didn't intend to make it look like Rilakkuma, but I felt like it looked a bit bare, no pun intended. So I decided to use felt to make the bare face. If I were to make it again, I would have sewn the face to this part of the bag before sewing the whole thing together. And that's how I made this cute little bag. If I wasn't making this for my two year old, I would have changed the straps and used it for myself. As always, if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.